Hey, it's Adrienne from Sew PDF, and I'm gonna walk you through how I made this giant donut floor pillow for my daughter to keep her stuffies in. Now this is a beginner friendly project, but I'm gonna walk through the steps pretty quickly. And if you are an absolute beginner and you want a more in-depth version of this video, just let me know in the comments, and if there's enough people wanting it, then I'll make one. So the first step is going to be to cut two giant circles. Or if you want to make a smaller one, you could do two smaller circles. Now, you can use pretty near any circle skirt pattern for this and just leave it. Instead of having the waist hole, you would just have a point at the corner. I used, you can see how I cut it out. I'll show you in, in a minute why I did that. But I used this quarter circle pattern from the free Snuggle Bunny Poncho pattern. So it's for a, it's for a circular poncho. So I used that and it, it made this size. So if you wanna use that for this size, then that's perfect. If you want a different size, then you'll have to figure out how to get your circles to be the size that you want them to be. Um, you could just take a ruler or a piece of string and put one corner in the middle and then just make marks at the end and keep going around and you'll get your circle. So after I'd used this pattern with, when it was still together to cut two big circles, then what we did was we drew a curvy line further in. So this is a good few inches, probably six inches for, in from the edge. And we drew a curvy line to make the icing that goes on top of the donut. Now you can make this pillow as not a donut um, and just leave the icing and the sprinkles off and just make a circle pillow. That's fine too. So I actually had my daughter helping me with this project. So she cut out, helped me draw and then cut out the edges here. And then we use this pattern piece to cut the icing. So the next step was to place the icing on top of one of the circles and I used fleece for my main fabric and I used a soft minky for the icing. So I put the icing on top of the one of the circles that was gonna be the top and pinned it together really well. Now I was using fleece and minky and fleece and minky both like to stretch and grow out of proportion, um, which is why it was important to pin it really, really well. And I really like using long pins for this. So I pinned it and then I sewed all the way around the edge and I used a tight zigzag stitch to completely cover the edge so that the fibers from the minky wouldn't keep shedding on all over. Now one thing to note is that because fleece does like to stretch out of shape, that it got pretty wavy. Um, now ironing it did get most of the wave out. I did use a pressing cloth. You cannot iron directly on minky and not really on fleece either. It'll melt on you. So you wanna use a pressing cloth in between your iron and the fabric. And one other thing I want to note is that if I had spray adhesive, I would have just sprayed the backside of this pink fabric and stuck it to the fleece. That would have been better because both fabrics do tend to stretch out of shape. So if you look at the inside, it's a little bumpy. There's ridges because the fleece sometimes stretched in areas that the other didn't, so they weren't exactly the same size. So the spray adhesive would have helped with this tremendously. So the next step was the sprinkles. And I'm gonna walk through these steps really quickly because we do have another tutorial on how to do appliques using this method. And I'll put the link for that in the description if you want a more detailed explanation of how to use heat and bond to make an applique. So first we needed a template for the sprinkles, so the sprinkles were all the same size. So I just drew a rectangle and rounded the corners on cardstock and there was my template. Then this needed to be traced onto our heat and bond light adhesive. So we wanted to do 12 sprinkles, four of each color. So I had my daughter trace this 12 times onto the heat and bond light. Then we cut it out in three columns of four sprinkles. We didn't cut right on the pencil marks to begin with. We just cut around, left a little room around the edges. Then we took each column and we ironed it onto the back 
of a scrap of fabric in the color that we wanted to use. After that, it's time to cut precisely and cut around each sprinkle through the heat and bond light and the fabric at the same time. After they were cut out, we placed them on top of the icing and pinned them in place where we wanted them. And then one at a time, I unpinned them, peeled off the backing, and ironed them in place with a pressing cloth. After they were all ironed in place, then I stitched around the edges, again with a tight zigzag, which keeps the edges from rolling because I used I use a fabric that tends to roll at the edges, so I wanted to keep, make sure that they didn't do that, which is why I used the zigzag instead of just a straight stitch. Once this was all done, we had a flat circle with icing and sprinkles, and actually it works pretty good as a nice nap blanket too, but my daughter still wanted the stuffy pillow. So the next step was to make some darts around the edges in order to make the shape rounder. So I cut a series of triangles around the edge, just up to the icing, and made these triangles exactly the same on the top circle and on the bottom circle. Next, I sewed these darts, and then it was time to sew both halves of the donut together. So I started with the zipper, making sure to line it up in the same spot between the same two darts on both the top and the bottom so that all of the darts would line up. And I used wash away tape to stick the zipper in place, which is my favorite thing to use with zippers. And if you haven't used wash away tape before and you want to get some, I've left an affiliate link down in the description. So after sticking it in place, I sewed one half of the zipper and then I stuck the other half of the zipper to the other half and I sewed that in place. And then after that, it was time to sew around the rest of the edge of the donut. So I sewed all the way around. Now, when it comes to either end of the zipper, what you want to do is increase your seam allowance a little. And by the way, I used a quarter inch seam allowance on everything for this, but um, right here where the zipper meets the outer seam, I had to increase the seam allowance to account for the width of the zipper so that it came up nicely at the ends and didn't leave the tape sticking out. And then all I had to do was open the zipper, which was a little tricky from the outside. I, I kind of had to feel through it and kind of grab the tab and, and get it going to open it and then turn it right side out because all that sewing is done with the sides right sides together. So it was, it was inside out and we put the right sides together and sewed all the way around the edges. So that's it, a fun project you can even get your kids to help you with. And if you do one this size, your kids might even actually fit inside it. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you'd like to see more sewing projects.